Uh, thank you very much. As you heard, uh, the primary responsibility of our group will be to conduct preclinical animal studies. And as Dr. Goldstein and uh, Boniadi indicated, uh, one, quant one of the sufficient quantities of uh, well-defined and cryopreserved astrocytes are produced. The cells will be then shipped to UCSD site. Uh, stored and uh, this will trigger the initiation of preclinical animal studies. These studies will be uh, performed in three separate sequ sequential phases. In phase one, we'll use transgenic ALS rat to define the efficacy. Animals will receive injection of astrocytes precursors in targeted into the lumbar or cervical uh, spinal parenchyma. And then we will define the degree of efficacy by combination of several behavioral tests and then correlate the degree of efficacy seen in behavioral tests with the uh, robustness or survival of transplanted cells. Once the phase one is successful, we'll move to phase two, which will be conducted uh, uh, in accordance with FDA allowable uh, requirements, and we'll define the safety of transplanted cells by injecting these cells into the lumbar spinal cord in immunodeficient rats. So this is the standard tumorogenicity study. Once successful, we'll move to the phase three, uh, in which we'll employ large animal model, mini-pig, which is required for in, uh, to move uh, cell replacement therapies to clinics, and we'll define the optimal cell dosing, we'll define the cell escalation dosing, and we'll also define the safety uh, for up to three months survival in large clinical model. Once this is successful, uh, the data from all three studies will constitute a data package which we hope will be used uh, for filing and request for phase one uh, with FDA. We, we performed several studies in past with a company called Neuralstem, who is uh, currently in clinical trial in LS, 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 LAS patients receiving human spinal stem cells. Uh, in the initial uh, study which we conducted with the neural stem, we had uh, to develop spinal injection technique which will permit you uh, well controllable uh, spinal cell injections into specific spinal cord region. You cannot see it really well here, but we have a, we, in, for that particular experiment, we use glass capillary with a diameter of the tip between 80 to 100 microns, which permits you to inject cells into specific spinal cord region, and this is exposed a lumbar spinal cord in a rat. Using this technique, uh, we demonstrated that there is a very robust survival and migration of human spinal stem cells injected into the ventral horn, as indicated by black dots, these are human cells, in ALS rats at eight to 10 weeks after injection. We have also shown that subpopulation of these cells uh, become neurons, as indicated by red color here and here, and also subpopulation becomes astrocytes, as indicated by red color in this case, and colocalized with a, with a human-specific marker or protein, which is only expressed in human cells, uh, as indicated by green color in this, this picture. Uh, more importantly, what we also showed that ALS rats, uh, which received graft of human spinal stem cells, this is the graft, uh, showed also a higher number of surviving alpha motor neurons, and as Dr. Cleveland indicated, these are the cells which uh, provide primary innervation of voluntary muscles in lower extremities, and this higher survival of cells uh, corresponded with a better neurological outcome at that particular time point. And this was in contrast to uh, animals which didn't receive any cell grafts. A uh, significant component, in, again, in moving cell tra replacement therapies to clinics is also use large animal models. And in subsequent study, again with neural stem, uh, we used a mini pig model uh, to demonstrate the safety of uh, human spinal stem cells. One of the issues which we had, we had to deal with was uh, spinal cord pulsation, which is a simple movement of the cord. As you expose the cord, you see the spinal cord is moving up and down, which is the result of respiration. So to eliminate this problem, we constructed uh, the first design and constructed a spinal immobilization frame, which can accommodate a uh, mini pig, and we use the system to very effectively eliminate spinal cord pulsation. To inject cells into the spinal cord, uh, we tested several devices, but this is the final product uh, or injection device, which was developed by Dr. Nicholas Bullis from Emory, who is conducting ALS trial at the moment. 
and he refined uh, uh, the system and uh, now we know that uh, by using this system we can achieve very well controlled injection of cells in large animals but also in human what he is uh, conducting now. And finally, important component in xenografting studies, it means when we transplant cells, for example, of human origin to animals, uh, in order to achieve long-term long uh, survival of cells is the development of appropriate immunosuppressive protocols as well as techniques will, will, which will permit you to deliver immunosuppressive dra drugs in very, very well controllable fashion. So what we did, uh, we also designed and then we just uh, received a custom-made, we call it mini pig jacket, which can accommodate uh, mini uh, uh, infusion pumps, 200 to 3 milliliters infusion pumps, which are hooked with the intravenous line and can deliver continuously immunosuppressive drug for up to seven days. Uh, in addition, we can use the system to effectively monitor any uh, concentration of any drug in plasma uh, which are being infused. So by using this system, combination of immobilization frame, injector, and immunosuppressive protocol, uh, we characterize long-term survival of human spinal stem cells uh, from, from neural stem uh, uh, at seven weeks uh, post-transplantation. Again, you cannot see it's too much light, but what we have demonstrated that the majority of transplanted cells uh, which are here, uh, develop neuronal phenotype or become neurons, as indicated by blue color. They also express proteins which are typical for synapse formation. It means that this is the indicator of uh, uh, newly formed contacts between transplanted cells and, uh, and neurons of the host. And this is just a closer look of transplanted cells of human origin. Again, red color indicates human cells. Blue color indicates the development of neuronal phenotype or becoming neurons. And so this was the sequential strategy which we used in preclinical studies for neural stem. And our goal is to use an uh, identical approach in our disease team. And hopefully, if everything goes well, we'll be ready in four years, as it was said before, uh, to file uh, for um, uh, phase one clinical trial with FDA.